G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome, everybody. Today, I'm interviewing Aaron Schultz, who is founder of Outback Mind, um, based in Queensland, Australia. And today, we're discussing the importance of health and well-being in running a business, which is um, very close to my heart, and I think a very important uh, topic that sometimes is overlooked. So, looking forward to hearing from Aaron and some uh, some good tips for for our listeners. Thanks for your time, mate. Yeah, appreciate it, Michael. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and it's good. Uh, we're just talking before and uh, haven't spoken to you for a while. We uh, got to know each other seven or eight years ago when our sons played cricket together and I was uh, the coach of that team. And uh, remembering back, you were a great support to, to me and our, our boys. So it's uh, good to connect because you left the state uh, a number of years ago and have now ended up in Queensland running this uh, important organisation for men's health. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to have the chat. Appreciate it, mate. And yeah, it's been a been an interesting uh, last few years, but you know, certainly the last seven years has gone pretty quick. And it's great that we can still keep in touch and and have and con- I'll have conversations about this sort of stuff, which is really important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, health and well-being's got such a greater exposure and understanding now, which is fantastic. And I guess more and more people understanding the importance of talking about mental health, particularly. So, all but always, you know, plenty of uh, work to do as you're doing. So. Um, so just as an introduction, tell our audience just a bit about yourself and your experience on this topic. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, certainly uh, I've had an interesting uh, career. I'm 51. Uh, when I left school, I didn't have a clue what the hell I was going to do back in the late 80s. And um, back then, university wasn't an option. Uh, coming from a small country town, it was sort of either you go to work or you uh, you become an academic, and I wasn't probably one of them. So I sort of... Went through uh, a few years of uncertainty until I um, uh, basically got a role uh, managing uh, a labour hire company so that uh, enabled me to manage uh, men in the workplace. Uh, So I had um, large groups of people uh, working uh, within the organisation which I I managed uh, in various industries. So I got to see lots of uh, different emotions uh, when it comes to uh, people uh, inside and outside of work. Uh, And that also... Uh, took its toll on me primarily. I spent uh, probably nearly 20 years in um, in labour hire um, uh, in various capacities. And um, uh, one thing that I wasn't aware of at the time was was the burnout factor. It actually um, hit me really hard, but it kept getting up, you know, all the time, just sort of kept digging deep, getting up. But um, my emotional health and my mental health, uh, you know, really started to struggle. And, um, uh, you know, I, I just uh, I wasn't uh, brave enough to be able to do something about it time and um, although I managed lots of people saw lots of different emo- different emotions it also counted a lot of people um, uh, to support them I wasn't really doing much to support myself and for me personally to go and actually seek help was um, was really challenging so I remember one year I was in Tasmania uh, I got to the stage where I was I had really hit the wall uh, I went to uh, Sandy Bay Clinic and saw Dr Michael Tooth and he said, you can do two things. You can, you know, I can give you tablets or you can exercise. So uh, basically um, that night I got home. We lived in a small uh, regional town called Lewisham. We never got junk mail, but in my mailbox was a flyer saying the first 24-hour gym in Tasmania was going to open called Zap Fitness. Mm-hmm. Uh, joined that and I knew if I did that, then I could get in there early in the morning so no one could see me. I was always worried about my, you know, um, uh, I suppose, uh, profile and all that type of stuff. So uh, you know that that was that was brought on to me from a young age. You know, worrying about what people thought about me. So I actually took it on. I got in there every day uh, for a year or more at four a.m. and I trained and got my physical body working well. That really helped clear my mind a lot more and actually gave me a lot of clarity around uh, my direction in life. And it actually helped me perform better at work and so forth too. Um, so, so fitness was the, the start of it for me, which actually, um, you know, took my, um, my, uh, self-awareness to another level, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah, that's uh, great. And, um, I think, yeah, dedicating some time 
to health and well-being, fitness um, is so important because it can uh, set yourself up, right? So um, if you don't look after yourself in business, you sort of can't look after your team and that trickle-down effect can have a significant impact on your team's engagement, motivation, performance and ultimately, you know, a financial impact. So uh, it's a, a great story and obviously burnout, um, very uh, common amongst uh, small business owners. So... Um, so in that context then, Aaron, what, what's the key implications that small business owners should be aware of with respect to the, uh, the importance of health and wellbeing? Definitely you've got to make that the, the foundation of your life to firstly look after yourself. And if you can do that well and do it continuously, then everything else benefits, not only your business but also family and, and other people around you. If you're employing people, if you're emotionally well and you're uh, – you're, 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 you're thriving uh, personally, then everyone else benefits from that. So, you know, I, I sort of was at the other end of the scale where I was just completely committed to work. I, I couldn't switch off when I went to bed and it'd be the first thing I, I thought of when I got up in the morning and I was just on this continual loop. But you've really got to find time to, um, to, 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 to connect to yourself again. And I, I think that early, um, early time in the morning is very, very critical. Uh, particularly in the lifestyle that we're in now where it's um, it's so demanding and so engaged in, in many areas, uh, we need to be able to find that time for ourselves, whether that through, that's through exercise, walking, meditation, some, some physical yoga, whatever it may be to help yourself regulate. I think that self-regulation process is really important. I, you know, lots of people start the day with a stimulant like a coffee or something and that sort of gets the nervous system um, escalated, but uh, there's always a, a downside to that. But if we can just get into this rhythm early, I think that sets us up for a good day. Uh, and then we make clearer decisions where we're clearer above the shoulders, and usually good things and good outcomes come from that. Yeah, what um, I often hear from business owners um, when you sort of talk about these topics, and it's not just health and well-being, but a lot of things that they say, well, I just don't have time for that. I mean, what would you say to as a response? Yeah, certainly. Look, you know, I, I would um, – one thing for me was to actually write down what I was doing and, 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 and how my days were structured. And if, if, I, can, if I can put 10% of my day towards my well-being – uh, which is only a small amount, which is 2.4 hours, which is a lot actually for a lot of people. But even if it's 1%, 24 minutes, uh, to be able to commit that to your well-being, the, your physical body uh, responds to that. Your your emotional health gets better. You know, you, you're not uh, looking for stimulation as much. You're not um, uh, having trouble winding down of a night time. You, you've really got to try and find that time for yourself. In a 24-hour day, to be able to find a small percentage of that for you as an individual, I think it's really important. You know, my my family, um, you know, uh, a wife and two kids and me being busy, we were always flat out, but we never actually did that personal time. And my personal time was to have a few beers at night. And and really, that that that's not great for us, you know. Uh, sort of, that sort of pushes things to the side, but it doesn't actually like help you know yourself uh, at the end of the day. So being able to uh, to find that time to to self regulate and, and really be committed to that, and I just think it takes time. So to be able to set out a, a thirty or forty day plan where you do something consistently every day, so that becomes a habit and you stick to that. So leading into the new year, uh, it's probably a great time and a great opportunity to be able to look at what's really important for you and how you know you might be able to improve your business moving forward. And I believe, you know, if you can commit some of that time to your well-being, then your business will benefit for sure. Yeah, it's a matter of um, making it a priority, isn't it, and um, diarising it. Um, I think diarising it's one thing, but you've got to sort of uh, make sure you have the discipline to to act on it. And um, I guess speaking from experience, I mean, I've done that for uh, probably 30 years in that I'm very um, disciplined, making sure that, um, it's in my diary, and I do the exercise pretty well every day, and it um, mm -hmm. it's such a such a difference, and makes you sort of more pro productive, um, and a and a better leader and, and business owner. It's helped you, you know. I had uh, lots of leaders when I was young that were probably alcoholics. When you look back at it, you know, drank drank a lot of beer every night and all those sorts of things. You know, I was around that uh, that mindset and that lifestyle through sport consistently. Uh, you know, my family was like that. I could not get away with, away from it, but I had to draw a line in the sand and say, no, I've got to do something now for myself. And 
you know, everything else has benefited from that. From from what from from that sort of you know point of view, I actually understood that that men primarily where we're really educated to support the economy as as we all are, uh, and that's our primary focus, you know. But um, being able to sort of pull that back and actually find what's important for you, I think, is really key. And that's why I sort of um, started the Outback Mind Foundation to try and help men uh, learn strategies on how they can actually. Um, uh, you know, look after themselves physically and mentally and make that more of a priority. And um, it's very tough for guys that are working in uh, professional realms in small business and, and in industries where it's very demanding and they're doing shift work and all those sorts of things, you know. So, um, so yeah, I, I very uh, very much uh, have a, a empathy for, for, for a business owner because I know it's hard, hard yakker and it's de- definitely guerrilla, guerrilla warfare for the first few years, you know, while you're getting established. But... At the same time, you've still got to be able to, um, you know, find that time for yourself because it's really key and important. There's no point working hard. I, I, I can name multiple cases of people that put a lot of time and effort into their businesses and they've either got, you know, terminal illness or they're, they're no longer with us, you know, through mental health issues, through um, through physical health issues and, and suicide, you know, which is which is quite common. And um, I just don't believe that that's, um, that's necessary if we do the things to be able to find that balance. Be the change you want to see in your business. Become more productive and less stressed with our free Transform Your Performance online course. Once you see the benefits, put your entire team through the course at no cost. We start out by telling you the secret to guaranteed success. Then over 100 lessons help you be more focused, present, productive, and feel more in control about work. Growalsmallbusiness.com. Yeah, it's, um, as you say, it's that, that balance and uh, when in the the whirlwind of running a, a business, it's sometimes very difficult. And I guess the point you make about um, alcohol is sometimes uh, used as a release, um, which is obviously not not ideal um, and it's not uncommon. So is there any sort of tips around uh, managing that um, aspect of, of, of a business owner's life? Yeah, definitely like pre and post work self regulation practices. So that's really, really exercise helps you connect with your breathing. When you connect with your breathing, your nervous system settles down, everything starts to regulate. What we have in our heads is we've got two hemispheres. And when we're stressed, our right hemisphere is really dominant. You know, if you can do things to be able to regulate that and get the blood flowing between both, then all of a sudden you're back to feeling calm and, and normal again. So being able to identify the difference between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system, most of the day we're now sympathetic. Can you do something at the start of your day and at the end of your day to get you back to that parasympathetic, calm, natural state? Because that's the way we're meant to be as humans. You know, we're meant to be in that calm state more and more often. Um, So to be able to sort of, you know, do those practices or do whatever uh, whatever it is in your day, which helps you find that, but also throughout your day, being able to sort of, Know, know where your emotions are going and come back to a you know a sense of balance again I think is really really important because when our minds are at speed uh, it's um it's actually easy easily taken away from us and we forget about you know ourselves so much but if you can sort of learn when that's happening when you you may be a bit stressed or anxious how to bring that back connecting with your breath is a, is a great way to do that there's various um tools uh, and strategies on on how to do that but um Certainly, uh, learning a learning a practice, uh, you know, I believe leading into the new year would be a great start. And if you could continue that for the first, you know, month or two months of the year, you'll find you'll probably have a habit uh, which will help serve you, you know, moving forward into two thousand and twenty three and beyond. Yeah, it's all about developing those good habits, right? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard, you know, like yeah, as we, as we know, we've got you know, we've got young fellows, 21, 22 year olds, and uh their their world is totally different than what it was when we were, we were that age you know we were constantly wearing our bodies out through fitness and sport and that and uh now they're spending a lot of time in front of a screen and uh you know being able to switch off from that first and foremost i think is really important when you go for a walk you do exercise try and disconnect from any technology you know get in get involved in nature and start to uh, do things which actually connect you with the natural elements rather than a distraction um, you know, and being able to even sit still without any distraction or stimulation, I think is really important because your mind needs a rest. And that, that's really the important uh, lesson uh, that I learned, you know, to give your mind a rest is, is so needed because 
if we're not doing that, we're constantly thinking and we're constantly turning over, and that's the way the human mind actually works. So we've got to learn how to, you know, peg that back and, and balance that again. Um, otherwise, we end up, uh, you know, we do hit uh, we do hit burnout primarily uh, without even knowing a lot of the time. Uh, whether we uh, we like it or not, we're putting effort in, but uh, our bodies are smarter than us, and if we don't uh, do something to help, you know, find that balance, then all of a sudden we we end up with disease physically, uh, physically or mentally. I guess at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a good point, I guess, with, you know, smartphones and social media and all that, regulating the time on that um, is, is so important as well because, um, uh, you know, no doubt that uh, has an impact, as you, as you say. It does, yeah. I um, In the morning, I, I, I do some fitness and I do some meditation. And then in the evening, I'll have dinner and then I'll go for a walk, you know, but I have no, have no stimulation, uh, you know, I'd go for a walk for... 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever it is, how much time you've got, but that just helps you wind down. And I just think we've got to wind our nervous system down at the end of the day so we can sleep better. If we sleep better, then we function better the next day. Uh, that helps our business. It helps our physical and mental well-being as well. And having those bookends, I, I think, is, is really important. So, you know, not not getting home and still doing book work if you can help it, but like actually having that, that time to yourself and, and time to disconnect, I think, is really, really key. Yeah, and uh, no doubt sleep is the other important bit in your health and well-being. For sure, mate. And um, you know, even even things in the home like like fluoro lights or or bright lights can make a difference. Like winding down and actually having some some soft lighting can make a a, a big difference to the way you sleep. Uh, and actually not having any technology around you when you when you're going to bed. Uh, a lot of kids these days have got devices on them consistently. Get rid of it. Get it out of the room. <laughs> Uh, with a book, do something which is uh, going to help your nervous system, you know, wind down, as I said. And all of a sudden, if you can do that, then you, you sleep a bit better. But if you're stimulated before you go to bed, it's very hard to switch off. Yeah, no, good good uh, tips there. Um, so just uh, in winding up then, Aaron, what's at least one thing you'd recommend a small business owner does based on your, you know, knowledge and experience? Yeah, there's probably a lot, a lot of them, but uh, certainly uh, being in a, in, a, in a small startup business myself years ago, uh, where I was pretty much the the, the income generator uh, and a lot of that, uh, the emphasis on the performance uh, of the business was on me. Uh, one thing that um, that really helped me uh, through that period was to be able to to uh, pay attention to my diet, my nutrition, to make sure that I was able to do what I needed to do throughout the day successfully and not sort of hit peaks and troughs with my energy. So really being able to manage your energy as well so you can perform when you need to turn it on, I think is really key. So getting the right uh, food into your diet, which can help um, uh, blood regulation so you're not sort of up and down as much. So less stimulation like you know, like coffee and um, caffeine and those sorts of things, um, you know, is probably helpful. Um, if it's working for you, great. If it's not, you know, try and find some things which can be probably more healthfully, uh, more healthier, healthier, and then start to, um, you know, improve, uh, improve, improve your diet. I think that can really have a, an impact on the way that you um, you perform in your business because you do feel feel better. Uh, for me personally, that that made a big uh, big difference when I was eating pastries and um, you know quick food uh, to to try and keep uh, up. That didn't work, you know, but uh, to try and make sure that I had the right food at the right times of the day to support um, the job that I was doing uh, made a huge impact for me. So any recommendation that I can um, I can have would be uh, any recommend any recommendation I, I could have would be around uh, you know trying to get your diet um, diet balance first and foremost, and then your whole uh, uh, I suppose uh, impact around your well being will start to change from there. Yeah, no, some some good tips, thanks, mate. And I think um, I guess coming back to sort of unlocking time to to spend on your health and well-being is important. And um, in that regard, yeah, we've got an upcoming course that uh, helps um, create an extra a couple of hours a, a week so that you can use uh, either working on the business or on your health and well-being. So we've got that coming out next year. So, And as far as um, Outback Mind um, and being a non-for-profit, um, mindful it's uh, you know the, the funding is important so you've uh, you've got a, a partner network you're looking to develop um, 
So if there's listeners out there that's interested, um, I guess jump on your, your website and uh, and maybe even give you a call. Yeah, appreciate that. I think what we're trying to do moving forward is to be able to um, help people in general, men and women, take a proactive approach to their well-being. And we want to try and provide as much education as we can um, throughout regional Australia uh, around that. Moving forward, I think 2023 is going to be a really big year. Uh, with uh, with regards to a shift in the way that we think about our health. Uh, we've had a really reactive culture um, uh, with regards to waiting for something's wrong and then dealing with it. I think if we can start to uh, work more on the prevention uh, and the prevention strategies and we're going to um, you know, see a, a flow on results uh, towards the end of the decade and beyond. So, so yeah, if anyone's listening and they'd like to, to help us out, um, we have lots of, um, uh, I suppose, uh, Link linkages and connections with businesses um, that might be able, might be able to support your business uh, moving forward. Uh, that uh, that could provide a return to donor as well, and um, um, it's also a great thing to be able to you know work with organisations that actually care about um, men's mental health uh, primarily and want to try and make a difference. So any any contribution uh, you could uh, help us with would be would would, would be great. And um, you know if you'd like to partner with us, just jump on outbackmind.org.au and. It's a bit of information on there, but contact me and uh, I can have a chat about that uh, even more. So, cheers. Yeah, no, awesome, mate. Um, thanks again for your time. It's been uh, good chatting and no doubt our listeners get a, a fair bit of uh, um, value out of uh, your, your tips. Thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. And for our audience, we'd greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc. So more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us. 